What's up, everybody? Welcome to episode 68 of the Around the Crease podcast. This week, we are talking high school playoffs, a little bit of a season wrap-up, and we make a few predictions. And we're starting now. How's it going, everybody? Thank you again for listening to this episode of the Around the Crease podcast. We got a good one in store for you this week as we are talking a little bit about the season wrap-up. Now, it's one of those things we realize that the season is not over yet. There's still a lot of teams and a lot of states left playing. But for much of the Midwest, um, those games get finished this weekend, this past weekend, actually. If you're listening to this on Sunday, those games are over. But it didn't stop Michael and I, who recorded this on Thursday, from making a few predictions. So you may be among the first to know whether or not we were right. Um, And be sure to let us know on Twitter for sure. Um, But we also kind of talk about the season wrap-up. I get Michael to kind of discuss what it's been like covering high school lacrosse for the first time ever. I relive some of my... Highlights from the 2019 season, um, and so we kind of just kind of do a deep dive on you know a little get a, get a little personal in this week's episode. So I hope you guys enjoy it, and we're gonna start that episode right now. All right, we're back with uh, another episode of uh, Around the Crease, and uh, Michael, welcome back, man. I know you've been uh, you've been busy for the past weekend. I guess you'll, it'll be an extremely busy weekend this weekend too. <laughs> yes, yes, it's uh, great to be here, and uh, yeah, it's 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 been a busy spring. Yeah. Yeah, and I figure it's a good time since I know not everybody's going to be done, but we're really kind of putting the bow on the season, um, you know, this weekend, next weekend. I mean, we're only going to have a handful of states that are still playing lacrosse. Um, well, depending, I guess we'll, we'll get to it, but depending on how the weather treats it, it may be a little bit longer than <laughs> anybody really had intended. But I figured now was a pretty good time to kind of uh, kind of talk about the, the season that we've seen so far um, and kind of maybe some of our here are some of our favorite moments, moments that stood out, and then kind of we'll try to not talk about the this weekend state championship games, even though I'm sure it'll be kind of be hard not to because we have Illinois, Indiana, and Ohio um, all finishing up, and theoretically we will have New Jersey finishing up, even though they were supposed to be done already, but that game just keeps getting delayed. Um, but yeah, so Michael, so what's this has been your first season of reporting um, on high school lacrosse? How's it going for you? Uh, and, um, it's been a lot of fun. It's been a, an experience. I, it's, it probably, it's different than what I thought it would be. Um, and as we talked before the episode, it's, uh, it's a lot harder than it looks. Um, and there's a big, res- there's a, there's a much bigger responsibility, especially talking about teenage kids. I mean, these are teenage ch- kids we're talking about yes. and, uh, I, I, I've seen different angles where there's people who are like critical of a, 15 year old and i'm like you know you gotta have a little you know thought about that so that's been different for me and i think coming from at it from a parent perspective uh i think whenever i think like oh this might have been a bad play or this kid did something stupid i think what would i think if someone wrote that about my own child yeah and it pulls me back uh, and then that's the other part that makes me look at parents in the stands when they're losing their minds. I'm thinking, what if that I go, what if you were yelling? What if you were yelling at your kid like this? I, yeah. So that's been the experience that I've had. I've had a blast. I've met so many great people, coaches, uh, parents, kids. The kids are wonderful. The kids are absolutely wonderful. They yeah. really appreciate when you go out there. So that's been nice. Officials, officials have come up to me. And walked up to me and shook my hand and said, thank you for all the words you wrote, which is something that I never expected. Yeah. I, I, you know, I didn't expect anything to resonate this way and it really has. So it's, um, humbling. It's a humbling experience, but I really do enjoy it. And, And I, you know, and thank you for giving me the opportunity to do this. Um, no one was willing to do this, give me this opportunity. And, and now, you know, other people are giving me opportunity, but it was all thanks to you and, and you taking a, a shot on me. And, and I, and I really, from the bottom of my heart, really do appreciate it. Oh, and I appreciate, I appreciate everything you, you, you've done. I mean, I, as far as I know, this is not a, a swan song. So no, 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 thinks, no, like, no, you know, right, no. We're, we're not, you know, this isn't the, the very last podcast. So, right. um, I mean, you got this, I'm here, yeah. this lags, right. We're still going. It's, um, so you, you said it was different than what you thought it was going to be. I guess, what, what did you think it was going to be when, when we started out and, you know, probably what, eight, March, April? 
Yeah, I, you know, I thought it would just be go to a game, enjoy it, <laughs> have a few words about it, whatever, you know, um, writing about it is again, we've spoken about, uh, it's a lot harder. Um, and it is, I'm not a clinical writer. I'm an emotional writer. Yeah. So I like to be at the, at the game and I like to write it as a story. Whereas, you know, obviously for anyone who's listened to us, I'm long winded. I like to talk I'm a storyteller. Uh, maybe it's my Irish heritage. <laughs> I write the exact same way as I talk. So when I'm at a game, I'm looking at parent reaction. I'm looking at kids reactions. I love being behind the side, behind the bench and seeing how the kids interact with the coaches. I like the personal aspect. Yeah. Um, so trying to pull myself away from that has been difficult. Um, it helps when you are you come in and sort of <laughs> in in line. Yeah, I, I think like we said, I I like telling a story, but then there's a story of just telling about the game. Yeah. Um. So that's been the big difference, where I didn't think I'd be that invested yeah. in the in the games like that. So, um. It's been it's been wonder. I mean, it's I I I smile every day when people say, "What are you doing?" I said, "Oh, I'm driving um, to Ohio to go see a game. I'm driving to Michigan to go see a game. I just got back from New York watching games." And people are like, "Are you crazy?" I'm like, "No, I'm having a blast." Uh, except the driving, <laughs> and I do love drive. It's been the weather, and we know what the weather's been wreaking havoc. Driving through, as I'm older, driving at night in rain it's it's been a little scary for yeah. me so uh you know that's one thing i had to get used to and and staying at hotels and and all the rest it's, yeah, but it's it's, a, it's worth it it's a it's a it's a it's a different life i guess uh best way to put it. i mean obviously i it's 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 funny to listen to you, to you talk about it because obviously it's been a i've been doing this for longer than i would really care to admit um, but you, you, there's usually like, and I, I recognize it in you immediately whenever, uh, you were first going to games. I'm like, yeah, I remember that like initial really excitement of just, you know, the sheer joy of getting to go to games. I mean, I remember the first college game I stood on the sideline for was like, oh my God, this is funny. You get, it's overwhelming. There's that sense of responsibility. There's also that sense of like, please don't screw this up. <laughs> like, you know, right. like make sure right. you right. make sure you spell the names right. Make sure you get the kids in it. You know, kid, the, the plays right. Like, there's that or the or the order or the time. Yeah. Uh, you know, if you sit there and forget something and you didn't write it down, you're like, wait, did that happen before that? And because one of those things make made the other thing happen. Yeah. Um, and I've been corrected on a few things. Someone's like, oh, that happened before this, and I'm like, oh. Yeah, and I, now now you're so now I literally take meticulous notes. That yeah. was the other thing I used to rely on my memory. Yeah, and now or I would just like be tweeting about it, and then I would follow my tweets. Right. Well, now I sit. I mean, if I could, I mean, I, I can show you what I have just sitting here. All my notes from the last two games. It's like three pages where it's been what happened when this happened, and then from my standpoint is yeah. How was this reaction taken? Was this, you know, was there a timeout called? I don't know if I'm doing it right. I'm sort of winging it, but it, it it's working for me. Uh, maybe at some point it comes, you know, I'm talking into something. But yeah. Uh, the other thing is I like to be very, I don't like to, although I'm wearing my hat and I wear my thing because I do want to represent and yeah. say, like, I'm not just some schmuck on the sideline. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I do like to stay away because I don't want to be involved in any way. Like I always ask the coaches, do you mind if I talk to you? I know you might have a pregame ritual. Yeah. Um, I don't want to interrupt that. I don't want to interrupt the kids. I always ask if it's okay to give a, a player of the game award. Um, shockingly, there's been a couple of coaches said, no, I don't want you to give a player of the game award. And I'm yeah. like, Okay, and they're, and, they're, and they're like, I hope you understand. I go, you're the coach. I'm just some guy coming over here to, you know. And then other coaches have been like, this is great. This is now, you know, part of the part of us when we we love when you come to the game. Yeah, they're like we're looking forward to it. Like it's like it. There's a celebration. <laughs> yeah, two of them. It was sort of funny, but, um, so it's it's just a different. It's better than I thought it would be, if if, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, and it makes me look forward. Like I've already today was going through like, what would I do different? Yeah. How would I break up my travel a little different? Um, 
I think the weather caused a lot of problems because yeah. at some point I just said, I don't feel like driving four hours that I could go into a rain delay yeah. or I don't feel like driving three hours in pouring rain and lightning. It's just, there's a safety issue and there's, yeah. a, you know, I have a family. Um, I think although like I loved going, driving to New York, I loved it. I thought that was probably my highlight of yeah. my summer was seeing those teams play. Yeah. That sort of took me out for a week. Right. Of <clears throat> Illinois, Indiana, Michigan, Ohio, some things in in, in uh, Missouri or wherever I was talking to different coaches. Like I was I was out. Yeah. And and so like I had to catch up where it was an experience. Um and I loved it. I don't know if I would do it again. Yeah. Even though the teams were so great. So yeah. great. People were great. That's always the trick. Ned, that's it's always one of those things like I mean it's it's a lot different now than when I don't know I'm looking at the TV for a specific reason oh, well you can't see the TV but uh, um you know it's a lot different now than when I started doing this in 2008 2009 when I was working for ESPN because it was always that debate like there's usually for me as the editor and primary content creator even back then like even though I was working for ESPN like it was a one man show like it was really no like the only thing different between now and then is the paycheck like right. there is no paycheck now. There was a really nice paycheck then, um, but you know it was always one of those like if I decided to go down, even you know I was living in um, Frederick, Maryland, for me to go down to D.C. to watch Georgetown Landon, put me behind with so much because you know you're talking about being out for a week. For me, it was like you know I was like all right, all the stuff that I would normally do in that time frame always got pushed back, and then you end up playing catch up, and then you know just. You get into a routine and you get used to doing stuff. And so, like, kind of like you, when I went to New York for that week, like, in the back of my mind, I'm like, am I nuts for doing this? Like, I'm trying to schedule my travel. I'm like, all right, I have to have these things done because, to be honest, like, since I'm running the site, like, n no one really cares that I'm in New York for, you know, Saturday and Sunday. Like, they're going to expect, you know, the same stuff Monday when they wake up that they always see. So there's that pressure for me to make sure that all that stuff gets written. So... Yeah, and, you know, good thing for, you know, laptops and airplanes. <laughs> you can at least get some of that stuff done. But, you know, a lot of it gets done like that. But, yeah, it's uh, for anybody that thinks, like, oh, you just stand on the sideline, watch a game, and you write what you saw, like, superficially, yeah, top level. That's that's basically what happens. But there's usually a lot more stuff that goes on um, behind, this, behind the scenes that you're never going to see. Which is, which is new, which was new to me. Yeah. Uh, and it's funny, it's funny what you mentioned about the laptops. I, I never had to use computers in my life, really. Yeah. I mean, I had, I had clerks that did things for me. I had, you know, uh, assistants that did stuff for me. So th that was handled my technology work. Yeah. Uh, I first, I finally had my laptop in like a hotel room. And like had to get on Wi-Fi and like had to try to write to, like I'm like and I said it to myself I'm like I'm on a deadline here and I stopped and sort of laughed out loud said who I, I what, I'm like I was talking to nobody I said yeah. like but I'm on a deadline I have to get this in which it turns out I didn't I didn't know there was the, I, there was some other things that yeah but it just was funny when you say like I'm like this is all so new to me like. Yeah. I, plus, I'm driving, so I drive everywhere. Yeah. I do have internet in my car. That's the best part. <clears throat> so I can sit there if I, you know, stop at uh, one of the truck, many truck stops I've stopped at or whatever. I can sit and and tweet or or, or send emails, and it's just like I'm in my house. Yeah. So that's that. It, that's technology that's helped in my way. But it's been yeah, it's been it's 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 been great. I mean, really. It's been great. I have yeah. it, and it's not over for me. It's yeah. not over in the least bit. I mean, I still have the playoffs coming up. Uh, there's still tournaments all summer. There's still now. It's going to be uh, where I've already had coaches from teams who have who are not in the playoffs anymore, who are already reaching out to me now and telling me about their players who should be looked at for next year. Yeah. So that's getting a nice jump now. Again, for I've seen a lot of the teams. So I've I taken notes on players all year. Yeah. And I'm saying this freshman is great. This sophomore is great. This deep hole is great. Where are they going to be? Is there anything changing? Is there anything going on? And then I could talk to the coaches. That was the other thing. I, I flew in blind this year. Yeah. I had to go and introduce myself to coaches, introduce myself to. Well, now the coaches know me. 
So they know I'm not some maniac just sitting there like, <laughs> you know, coming up there and walking yeah. up like some crazy person. They know they know what I'm about. So now they're very um they like it. They know that this is helping the kids. And that's yeah. in the at the end of the day, everything about this is to promote this game for me and in, in where I'm hit. You know, yeah. I mean, you're all over. My focus is like I've said, strictly the Midwest and I want to bring up the spotlight on it yeah. and the spotlight the kids. Would I love to be able to go down south and go to to the to, to southwest? And yeah, I would. At some point, that would be great. Um, although I do feel like it's cheating when I watch a game online. <laughs> like I don't feel like I can report on it the same way. I don't know if that's like I don't know if that's what reporters do. If they if they sit and watch a game on TV, well, I, I know some of them have to because some of the reports yeah. I've seen on some games. And I'm like, there's no way that guy was there. I'm yeah. like, there's no chance that guy. Was. I'm like, no one would have paid that guy to go there to here. So I know that they're <clears throat> watching it. Yeah. Uh, I sort of feel like that's cheating me. <laughs> I don't know. I, I just, I, it's, it's something weird. But I was watching, I was at one game watching another game on my phone. Yeah. I was sitting there like this and, and watching the game. And then I'd be looking at this. Or I've getting people, parents, sending me play-by-plays as it goes out on my phone. Yeah. Uh, I have my, my iPad and then my phone and I'm getting gay. And then I get parents who know the other teams that are playing asking me. I mean, you saw it when we were at the the uh, Midwest Lacrosse Challenge yeah. watching Culver New Trier and Brother Rice was playing Dublin Kaufman. Yeah. And I was getting updates and, and feeds from that. And I'm like, okay, we're sitting there watching this and that. So I didn't report on that because I'm like, I wasn't there, but I certainly could have because I had every single play, every... I had that broken down more than anything because of the four different parents were all two were from one school and two were from the other. And it was two different opposing opinions. So I'm like, wow, I could really make something out of this. Yeah. Uh, but I guess maybe I'll do that from now on or I don't know. I, but you know, we, I don't we know. Got, there, there'll be a debrief after the season. Once the stuff and we can, you know, that that's, that's for next year. We don't you right. know, we worry right. about that. You know, we don't worry about that for next year, but yeah, I will say I, I don't consider it cheating because it's funny because it's listening to you. It's taken me back to like literally my when I was in college and um, our my professor was telling us like the first assignment he ever had us do. He's like, here's a box score. Write a story. He's like, I need you to write 300 words. All you have is the box score. He, like he just had a, he printed out a box score from a game. And that's that's what you had to learn to do um, as a reporter. Granted, it was a different time then, too. Like, you know, it wasn't stuff wasn't even online. Like sometimes all you had was like all you have is the box score. But you still had space in the news column that you had to fill. I'm like, well, you have to report on, you know, the Maryland Duke game, but we couldn't afford to send you there. Or you had to be, you know, there's four other games that day, and this is where you go. Um, budgets will always play a part in that. So you know, if it's like, all right, the game is online, or we can spend, you know, several hundred dollars and send you there because I mean. There's a little bit of an advantage in lacrosse and some of the East Coast media that you know a lot of times they don't have to go very far. You right. know, like I know I know Ty was able to go to the um, the Geico National, not the the show, not the showcase, the Nationals this past on Memorial this, Day weekend. Yeah, past two years I've gone to that. It you know I drove. I have family out there, so I was able to crash with them. This year is like it was the choice of going to the showcase in New York or the Nationals, and I chose the showcase and. I think I made the right choice, you know, but it's like when it was like, oh, you know, it would have been nice to see Bullis take down Salisbury. That would right. have been a fantastic matchup. Like, I was able to watch it on TV, but, you know, it's one of those things like, but Ty was able to be there in person. Like, he was able to go to a lot of games this year. Like, I know in the past years when I worked with uh, 3D Rising and Casey Vock, like, he would travel. Like, he would go to games in Washington and Oregon and Texas. Like, he was wiped because there's so much travel so i mean but you have to think about that stuff nowadays it's like all right no it's going to cost you x amount of dollars to go here and there and there or you know for some of the game like you you know it's like well you can watch the calvert hall um mcdonough game on tv it's going to cost you a whole lot less (laughs) right you know than uh than it is for you know from for someone like me to travel and do all that you know and traditionally i've gone to the miaa championship game because you know just frankly it's a good time plus since all a lot of the people that i know um from my early days it's always like uh i know that's those are the games people will be at so it's a nice like homecoming like oh i get to hang right. out with some of my social friends gathering. you know it's, it becomes a social thing you know everybody hangs out we all got a job to do um you know for me now it's the under armor senior game like a lot of the same people that are in baltimore um but so what was your like 
maybe not favorite moment because I know that's probably going to be hard to pick. But like, what's a moment that really has stood out to you from this season? Whether it's a game, a player, a reaction, like, what's been your favorite moment? <sighs> oh wow. Uh, well, the trip to New York was something else because it was like um just the reception i received from the coaches in new york yeah how gracious they were how how they understood how important what i was doing like i think people here like what are you who cares about lacrosse yeah but when the people from the very highest uh echelons of high school lacrosse are sitting there saying anything you need call us yeah i thought that was awesome uh i will say just a weird thing was but it was so cool was the brother rice game against new Trier, uh, mm -hmm. at brother rice, new Trier just, they were just, they had just played the, no, I can't, I, my days are mixed up. <laughs> they had just lost the day before to, to, uh, Detroit Catholic central and mm -hmm. university of Michigan. Yeah. Which was also super cool. And the night yeah. before I was at, uh, see now it's all right. The yeah. night before I was at the university of Cincinnati to see Moeller say X. Yeah. I mean, these are huge, rivalry games that are crazy and i'm in college stadium so that was also cool but just the i saw a different new trier come out than i did the day before against detroit catholic so when when i was and i was standing smack in the middle of the field of brother rice i was standing on the on the center line and uh i had just been talking to, to coach shala and New Trier all of a sudden, and they've always been a tough team. They've always yeah. been physical. There are a lot of football players, a lot of hockey players, and they just seemed, in the second half of that Detroit Catholic game, they just seemed to be a little better. They just seemed to get a little better. They just had the edge come back. So knowing they were about to go up against Brother Rice, a big, physically imposing team, mm -hmm. I was standing there staring at New Trier when Brother Rice came in. Now, Brother Rice comes in. I, if I don't know if anyone's ever seen this, I mean, there's been some great entrances, but they walk from their locker room right onto their field, playing "Hell's Bells" by ACD. All you just hear is the the beginning of the song, and right. they all walk in in silence. Yeah, and it's it's like a professional wrestling opening, like <laughs> like something the Undertaker would do. Yeah, and it's the most intimidating thing if if you were a, a team playing them. Yeah, and just seeing all the new cheer guys sort of go up right up to the center line and get almost in their face where I'm like, Oh, this is going to be a good one. Like yeah. this just had, and it started that way and it was physical. And I would love to see new Trier now that they're in their groove playing yeah. brother rice, because as I said at the time, I go, I think brother, I think new Trier would have been the only team that's physical enough that could punch brother rice back in the mouth. Yeah. Um, for still central, that's another tough team. But if there was just something about that that really stood out to me. That was yeah. that was that was really really cool. I, just, yeah. I like I, I have a video of it. Me and my son were there, so that was a that was one that sticks out. But I mean, the stadiums. Yeah, seeing the University of Michigan Stadium, uh, the University of Cincinnati, Cincinnati. That was an absolute treat. I mean, like I like I said, I parked my car in the stadium, like not at the stadium. Yeah, in the stadium. I could have sat in my car and watched the game like it was a drive-in movie. Yeah. That's how close when you pull up your car, there was a seat in front of my car. Yeah. So those were the the amazing things and the, and the different traditions um, uh, that schools have. Upper Arlington, they walked when they were playing Dublin Kaufman. They were escorted by the police down the street. Yeah. So you see the lights, and then you see the team walking on. Yeah. New Trier and Loyola, they walk the mile. Yeah, someone in posted full, video of that. That was great. They, in full, they so when they played there earlier, <laughs> they walked, and then on the playoffs, Nutria and all the parents were standing at Loyola with all the flags, and just they walked in. So those cool things that I never knew about some of these schools, their traditions. Yeah, uh, that was those are the things that stick with me. Saint Xavier at University of Cincinnati, they had a huge tailgate. Yeah. It was a tailgate. They were barbecuing, food, drinks. It was going on. It was a Friday night, and I just took a picture of it, and I'm like, this is, this should be the future of lacrosse. It yeah. should be Friday nights, just like football. These parents were all into it. They were having a good time. There were kids around there. I'm like, this is how it should be. This this could this could do it. This could make money. 
a athletic directors, look at this. <laughs> Let, let's not do it at two o'clock or five o'clock on a Tuesday. Let's try to make it the same schedule as football. So narrowing it down to one, it would just have to be the new cheer brother ice, but there's just so many. It was yeah. just too many. Yeah. I think uh, for me, it was, uh, I guess <clears throat> multiple things. Like I think my, my, it's not really a moment, but you know, I had the idea in the, I think it, I was sitting, I remember I was sitting in an airport in Baltimore. So it was probably January. And I had the idea because one of the, my things is moving to the Midwest. I missed out on a lot of, you know, the, the big games and the easy travel. Like, you know, it's very easy. Like it, it was four hours to New York. It was, you know, you can get the middle, you know, four hours to middle of Virginia. Like I had friends in North Carolina. I was able to go to the King of Spring year after year. So there was a lot and which brings in a lot of teams from all over. So, you know, I was kind of trying to think of like, well, how can I kind of bring that, I guess, experience and kind of see that. And so for me, like I let I forget the, the count, like 19 teams take over the Instagram, the Lax Records Instagram account this season. Um, I had one almost every week from mid-February on. And for me, that was one of the most enjoyable things for me that didn't this week or this year because of, uh, you know, just being able to see the teams and you get to see the traditions because the kids take you be, literally behind the scenes of what they do to get ready it, it was hilarious because I was making a comment to someone at my in my real job. Um, I was like, yeah, all the kids interview themselves with the water bottle. They use that as the microphone. And it was across the board. Every team that did that used the same thing. I was like, it's just funny. I was like, it makes total sense because it's what they have there. And, it, you know, mimics, you know, and it's almost that, like, you know what it is whenever they, when uh, someone makes that motion. Um, but it was, it was that stuff and getting to see, you know, obviously Dale Barton, um, when they beat um, Chaminade and – the last regular season game for for them and I think for Chaminade like that was a big one so there was some moments that was able able to be captured uh this season that I got to take part in that normally I would not have even living in Maryland I wouldn't have gotten to take part of that stuff so like it was fun to see all those teams and see the traditions um and the players this season um but also like I got to see uh you know players like Graham Bundy um Cade Newton like these are players that you know I mean, Bundy just, he's the first player in Missouri that I'm aware of to ever score 400 points. Cade finished second, at, well, at this point, like he's second in Illinois in scoring. So I got to see some of these guys live um, during the season. I was got to see Brennan O'Neill. Um, right. And a lot, you know, that, that, that'll that be a highlight because I'd be like, you know, the moment I'm like, and I've seen him play at the Under Armour games, but it was, it was the Under Armour stuff I always take, like, for whatever reason, I've always separated that stuff because, yeah, I know they're playing games and they're playing against. But it's not the same because they're not right. playing with teammates. Like seeing him at Under Armour, and then seeing him with his teammates who he practices with and plays with day in day out was a treat. Because then you got to see what kind of player he really is in a team yeah. atmosphere, not so much you know the Under Armour stuff where you know right. it's a little totally bit totally agree with you. Yeah, so uh, getting to see him, um, you know, obviously for me, every it's coach no strand at Haverford school was uh, getting to see him kind of like not in his last season. Cause he's going to Gilman next year, but just kind of getting to see him. Cause I got to talk him in the preseason and kind of find out what was going on. And then seeing him not only at that game, but then winning the way they did in the final seconds, like that was yeah. tremendous. And seeing the celebrations, like that's one of the things I love about the, the playoffs, which we're going to talk a little bit of playoffs here in a second, but like all the videos of all the celebrations that just sheer, it reinforces not that I needed it, why I love um, covering high school. And not that you don't get it in the pros, but, like, I literally, before I logged on um, to you, I was watching a highlight. Um, Ward Melville scored in the final. And I don't know if it was overtime because I don't remember at this point, but they beat Smithtown Wetch. It was a huge rivalry. Class A, Long Island. Uh, I forget what county. I always get the Section confused. 11. Yeah, well, it's Section 11, but I can't remember if it's Nassau or Suffolk County because it's the county championship. Right. Um, I think it's Suffolk. Because West Islip is in it, and Suffolk's, that's where West Islip is. But Yeah, but I, the, all the Long Islanders are probably yelling at me right now because I right. don't, know the, don't know the difference. I always get them confused. It doesn't matter. Um, but the kid literally, like, he scored the goal, game-winning goal. It literally, it's just, it, you could just tell he's out of his mind. Helmet gets thrown off. Kids start sprinting the other way down the field. I'm sure he was probably exhausted. The jersey goes off. He's just screaming to set off. I'm like, that's what I love about high school. It's like the sheer joy of just you know playing and that exciting moment and obviously in the past week i've gotten to see a lot of those because people are posting them so like you know for me to see seton hall prep 
when they beat um, Darian out of Connecticut. And I think it was double overtime or overtime at that Geico showcase and seeing this, the sideline explode. And like same with Haverford school when they won, it was just like seeing those moments always end up making my, the experience that much better because just that sheer, the sheer joy of seeing the kids celebrate. And it's always funny because the coaches never get as excited. The coaches are happy obviously when they win, but the coaches, they're like, they're never taking part. And I'm like, that's the difference when you get to a certain age, these celebrations just don't seem like they take place anymore. It's like you're much more reserved and much more calm. Um, whereas the kids just, they don't care. They're celebrating. They're having a good time. So those, those you know, it's not one moment, but it's just kind of like the, you know, the experience from this season that has been, been a blast um, for me. Yeah. Um, well, you, you know, when you talk about the coaches, see, there's the behind the scenes. I'm not going to name what names, but some of those coaches, when they're off to the side with the players, it's a whole different, I mean, the, yeah. the swearing, and, and there's a few of them, and if yeah. they're listening, they know exactly who I'm talking about, but I love that. I yeah. love the emotion. I love, there's a coach who lost, who was, he was, he was very unhappy, but a coach who won, and, and just, and just going, the excitement where you're like, that, that's what I'm like, glad that these guys still have it, glad that it's not so, you know, I mean, I, I they could never do it in public. Yeah. Uh, or in front of me because it would look bad. But when I saw him in the side, I'm like, oh, that's great. That, I mean, <laughs> like I had my camera and I've just stuck it in my pocket and I'm like, enjoy it, coach. You know, yeah. I walked away and, and one coach was like, no, no, get in here. Yeah. He's like, get in here, get in on this. And and it was sort of, there was one team that would use, that would do a, a dance yeah. afterwards. Uh, St. X sings their, their alma mater. Yeah. Um, so yeah, there was just so much fun stuff. How about the snow, the snowstorm at Cathedral? There oh, was yeah. a little, the, the, a blizzard. I was in a blizzard. They couldn't, you couldn't see the ball. I mean, it was crazy. So, and then you came the next day. Yeah, I came like, the next day when they were cleaning all, cleaning up after. They had the to shovel the, dr- they had to shovel the field. Yeah, that that was uh, there, there was some yeah, obviously it'd be a memorable season and you know fitting that you mentioned the weather because I figure it's you know we don't want to leave the teams out that are really kind of still playing and I think. Uh, one that really kind of like it's been indicative obviously like i have family that lives back in maryland they were telling me that they had some pretty bad storms um oh i guess in the past few days like they've i mean it's been hot it's been in the 90s so you generally you know you get that hot and humid thunderstorms generally happen you know not too far off um you know I, we were talking i think we mentioned new jersey earlier i think they started playing now, for anybody who doesn't know, they do their – they call their group championships. That's their state title. Um, they have groups one, two, three, and four, and they do do a um, non-public, um, which is basically the private schools. They do championships for those as well. And then all those teams go into uh, a pool for the Tournament of Champions. Well, I think on Wednesday night, I think every one of those games – got either suspended or just pushed. Like if, uh, cause I think it was Mansaquan and mountain lakes. It was seven and a half minutes in this, into the second quarter and game got suspended it was supposed to be played today, which is Thursday. And I saw just before we logged on, that game is now getting played Friday. Um, so delayed again. So, I mean, the weather has obviously played havoc. And then I saw that because of those results, that tournament of champions now has gotten pushed to a start to I think Monday or Tuesday of next week. So it's one of those things like when we were talking earlier, it's like, you know, it's it's one thing when a regular season game gets delayed or suspended. You know, if you make it up, you do. If you don't, it's one game out of the schedule in the grand scheme of things, it won't really matter. But when you're talking about state championship games, like they can't just be like, All right, we'll just forget about this. But <laughs> like no no one's gonna let you just be like, No, this one will get, you know, we'll play this one another day. Like, no, these got to games get played. So, I mean, obviously the weather, and I think this season the weather has kind of played. Oh, in fact, Minnesota, crazy. I know, really had a rough, rough start to their spring. I think they had a blizzard two weeks ago. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> Colorado, I mean, Cherry Creek and Kent Denver played in a snowstorm for their state championship game. Made for a great photo. Can't imagine how fun it was playing, and I'm sure it was unexpected to play in that. I mean, you're talking mid May and. The field was covered, covered in snow. And I'm like, if that's not a state championship game, you, does it? Like, I don't even know if they continue to play that game. Like, that might I be like, it. you know, we're coming. I mean, I'm sure they, the officials and everything, obviously, state championship game, you tend to get the, uh, the A list and everybody's paying attention. So, like, I'm sure they were getting the field cleaned and everything. But the pictures of that game, I was like, 
if you had asked me, if you just show me the picture, I'm like, oh, that's got to be April. Like, I would never, I would never guess it. I'm like, oh, that's the May. That's the state championship game. I mean, it's been nuts. Um, but I think the biggest one, and you mentioned at the start, was uh, in Pennsylvania, which is in their their playoff system. Um, I guess you kind of, like, I really kind of hate to, you know, because I always try to, you know, lend it a positive side and understand, like, from, uh, from both sides before, you know, I make a judgment. I don't like to be overly critical, but you really got to wonder what the PIAA was thinking by, I think you said it was, um, uh, Palmyra. Palmyra. Their game just, they, they were like, all right, we basically we're done. I think it was nine, eight with nine, nine, eight with nine, nine minutes, nine left. minutes to go in the game. Um, you lost. Yeah. And it was just like, all right, that's it. Game's over. And I'm I like, that just baffled me. Like I saw Ty had tweeted it, and, tw- and I was like, I can't believe that actually went. Like, I can't imagine being the losing coach on that team. Like, I would have probably lost my lid. Like, how I, about seeing? How about the senior kids? I mean, just everybody. Like, that's how you go out your high school. Maybe the last time you ever play, <laughs> some ref says, "Oh, the the administrator from the PIAA said we're just going to cancel it." And you're like, wait. I've busted my ass for four years. This is my last game. Yeah, and, and you're don't down even by get to one. You're down and by down one, by one with right? With nine minutes, which is nothing. Nothing, nothing. that can change Absolutely in a that can nothing. that whole right. thing can change in a minute. Literally so, one minute. I, the, I mean, I really feel bad for the kids. Yeah, I mean, I, just you can't ever live with it. Like you could never. Oh yeah, that would haunt me. That would haunt me. That's gonna be a pebble in the shoe. Right. They, oh, that's so bad. Yeah, I can't believe. Like I. I haven't heard an explanation as to why they decide that because I'm like, you know, I'm I'm literally looking at the New Jersey and like that doesn't happen in a state championship game. And I get like and because I remember years ago when I was covering track and field, the conference had they had pushed back the weather had pushed back their um, conference championship meet so much that they had one day like it had to get played by this day or no one qualified for states is basically what it amounted to. It was pouring down rain. It was there was like an inch of water on the track, and the kids are trying to like they're trying to run hurdles. They're trying to you oh. know do the sprint. They're they're trying to do everything. I am in a shed, literally a shed, watching the events and trying to write because the rain is at an angle and coming into the shed. My notebook is drenched. Like it was it was a miserable day. I'm like it was. I mean I'm in the shed with like the opposing team and all the teams because everybody's just trying to keep warm. It, it was nuts. So I'm like, but even them, so like, and, but they, they still ran it in that. I'm like, they were like, granted they had one day to do it and it was right, yeah, the states. and I just think about this. I'm like, there's no contingency for that. Like for a game that gets called a weather and like, you just cancel it and be like, all right, you know, we're just, you know, this is the score. It's done. Like in the regular season. All right, fine. Whatever. I mean, I'm sure if they said we have a window in the weather pattern at 6 a.m. till 9 a.m., get here at 6:30. I guarantee you every kid would be lining up at 6:30, ready to finish that game. Yeah. So I don't understand. They, you know, give them one hour in a weather pattern. Yeah. I, and, and you can see it now. The, the radars now. I could the, when they sit there and say, "Oh, the rain's coming in 45 minutes." I could sit there. I timed my drive back from from Chicago to Indiana yesterday. Yeah. Between the storms, like I, I went back and forth without getting a drop of rain on me because I timed <laughs> it. I let it pass me this way, and then I got there, and then I beat it coming back the other way. And I'm like, you look at that radar. So they could have found a window somewhere within the next day or two, an hour. Just give them an hour to play nine minutes. Yeah, I mean it's that that's that's just a shame. Yeah, um, it is a shame. In my opinion, it's that, a shame. That's, it's a real shame. I feel it's a black eye. Yeah, it really is because I mean, for the kids, for the coaches, I mean, for the fans, like everybody, no, no one, no one won. I mean, obviously there was a winner, but no one won in that that situation. Because I mean, even the other team, like you kind of have to feel like, you, I guess you would even have to probably feel a little cheated then because it's like, oh well, I mean, you're probably happy you came away with the win. I'm sure the coaches are very politically correct about it, but you right. know, it's kind of one is like you don't you don't play two and a half quarters, not even two and a quarter quarters. Um and and call winner in that one, but you know, I guess that's over now. Like that right. team has moved on. Um, and I guess we'll see how you know. Right. But I have to believe there's going to be some sort of there's going to be some repercussions from something like that. Like the the coaches, I'm sure the other athletic director can be like, we can't have this. Like you can't 
do that. Like just end a kid end team season player seasons. Right. You know, in a situation. But you know like what? That. We're coming up. So this weekend, we have Illinois, yep. Iowa, and or uh, Illinois, Ohio, and Indiana, and they're calling for rain. Yeah. All weekend. Yep. All weekend. It's rained and, here in Illinois like been, every and day. And it's been vi- and it's been violent. It's yeah. not like this is a drizzle. If it's a drizzle, it's no problem. When you just have just you know tornadoes that Let's... ripped right from Illinois, mm. right through Indiana, right into Ohio. Yeah. Covered all three right there. It's all the lightning. Uh, the lightning. The, yeah. the nonstop lightning. And that's it, because every lightning strike, it's a half an hour. You yep. can't do anything from that lightning strike. Yeah. And then another one. And then another one. So I'm looking at the timing of this. So we got tomorrow in Indiana, we have the semifinals. So we have two games tomorrow. And I think the first one starts at 6, the second one's at 8. So I was looking at the clock, and I'm like, all right, there might be a window to get those in. <laughs> Saturday, it's in the it's I think it's later, and I'm like that does not look good. Illinois, I haven't looked at Illinois. Ohio, they're calling for thunderstorms. Now they have four games in Ohio all yeah. the same day: the the Division One, Division Two boys, and Division One, Division Two girls. Yep. And I'm like, so that's a that's a eight hour window where I'm like, this is going to be delayed. Yeah. I I will be there, and I'm like, I guarantee it will be delayed at least. I'm going to say twice. I'm going to give it the over-under twice <laughs> that there'll be a delay, there'll be a clear-the-field situation because the lightning. Yeah. Um, it's at Ohio Wesleyan, so that's that, that makes it easier. I mean, it's a stadium. There's shelter. Yeah. Uh, there'll be a press box for me. Well, that's fine. You'll uh, be dry. You'll be, right. be a little bored killing right. time between those games if they get right. delayed. <laughs> well, there's going to be – here. the funny thing is, so there's going to be a lot of college coaches at that game because the next day at Ohio Wesleyan <laughs> – is a prospect camp. Yeah. So they'll be there catching it. So, I mean, it'll give me time to, you know, hobnob a little and schmooze around a little. And, uh, and I'm staying, so I'm staying overnight. So if, if it's delayed long, I can go to a ho- my hotel room or whatever, but I just want them to get finished. That's, yeah. I just, it's not that I want it to get, I just want to be able to watch it. Yeah. There's nothing that I hate more. It's like, okay, rain. And then it takes kids out of their rhythm. And then you sit there and you go, well, they were doing great before the rain. Uh, and you always know it always affects one team. Yeah, it, it does. always affects, and it usually affects the team that's doing great, and the yeah. other team gets a time to, to, to catch re- the breath, right? And then say, what did they just do to us that we're down? And then they get to make adjustments. Yeah, and the other team's like, well, we were doing great, so they don't have to make adjustments. Yeah, so you know, yeah, I've it's seen life. that happen. En- I've seen that happen right. a number of times. You know, it's life two different life. teams right. in the break. Right, right. And, and especially at this age, that's the beauty of. High school things can change in a second in high school sports. Yeah, I mean one play, one move, one kid falling down because it could. It, it is a sport where you might have one kid who could dominate. Yeah, as opposed to that doesn't really happen in college. Right. Or if it did, Loyola would be the national championship with Pat Spencer. Yeah. You no, know, in high Duke, school, Duke would have won the national championship right. with Zion. <laughs> right. I mean, in high school, one kid, especially in the Midwest, I mean, it's a generalization, but. One kid could make the difference in a game. Yeah. One could just take over. I've seen kids take over. Yeah. Um, and this kind of thing could set that off or set that going. And and there's some good teams left playing. Uh, and I'm really looking forward to it. And I just hope I hope we can get it in. That's for the for the kids' sake. Yeah. That's most importantly. I well, hope I can drive to these places <laughs> with no problem. But once I'm there, it's fine. I'm not. I don't care about getting stranded. It's just getting there. Well, I'm pretty sure they will get the state championship games in. What'll be interesting is if there's a camp the day after the state championship right. game. If those get delayed, like, ooh, that could be um, some tricky scheduling right, right there. It's like, all right, where do you play? You know, if you need an alternate venue for somebody, <laughs> like, who budges in that in that case? So, you know, either well, that or it's going to be two o'clock in the morning. They're going to be playing right. state championship games. My guess would be Ohio saying. Um, prospect camp you're pushing back until we get our stuff finished and i if i was the prospect camp i'd be like okay what yes thanks for letting us have it here and yes we'll we'll do whatever you want yeah there's lights in the stadium yeah you know kids are out of school if i have to stay there another night so be it yeah so and yeah. i will be and at the I will, and i know ohio will get it done yeah. ohio oh, will yeah. get their sports oh, done state championships will get played no matter right. what you know circumstances will, will, will dictate that those get played um, and right. I'm going to be at the Illinois championship on Saturday. 
Um, and I have not yet looked at the weather. Like I try not to look at it too far in advance because the way it's been, I mean, every morning I've gone to work in almost pouring down rain, been woken up several times this week by the rain and thunder, you know, outside my window. And then by the afternoon, it's nice and sunny and, you know, almost 80 degrees. So I'm like, all right, well, depending on what they're calling for, it, it really can go either way. So right. you know, I haven't looked at it yet, but, uh, you know, again, It'll get played one way or the other. You know, I'm, I don't usually stand – I usually stand on the sideline with a, a camera, so I'm really kind of hoping for good weather. Right. <laughs> I, I, I hope you get it too. So – but that – that and that's at uh, Hinsdale. So that will yes. be uh, – you know, we don't get the college stadium here. We'd not like to get to play at Northwestern. Um, would be fun. It would be, be fun. awesome. Um, Especially that new state – that new lacrosse stadium they yeah. have there for the girls. Oh, so, God, is uh, that good. Yeah, it's going to be another good weekend, and obviously Michigan, I think, is next weekend. Um, yep. I really don't want to go out on a limb, but I'm pretty sure Brother Rice will be there. <laughs> I would assume Brother Rice will be there. Um, I would assume the I'll, – I'll, I, you know what? I don't even want to say because, God forbid, if something happens, then I won't hear the end of it. All I know is this. My most important thing when I go to Michigan will be uh, – look, you have your cat. My dog just walked in there. Yeah. So. <laughs> This has never happened before. Dog, what's going on? Um, I'm going to try Detroit pizza. I mentioned something about Detroit pizza. I don't know if you saw that. Yeah, I did. Said, you got to go here. You got to go. An owner of a pizza parlor reached out to me and said, when you come in, I'm going to give you the, the whole rundown. We're going to do it. So I know that for sure will be happening. Yeah. I'm not going to say who's going to be in the tournament, uh, the, the games, but I know that I'm going to be eating uh, a lot of Detroit pizza style pizza yeah so that that'll be that'll be something to kind of wrap up here do we want to make any uh predictions that will be either right or wrong by the time people are listening to this on sunday since i think almost all the games are either friday or saturday like the the teams (laughs) yeah who win i'm i'm gonna pick illinois championship because i'm i'm just you know i'll make people mad some well half the fans but you know i'm pretty sure new trier is gonna hoist the crown um in illinois this year yeah i would Um, say that's a that's a good, uh, a good pick. I got to see them a couple times this year at that Midwest thing, and um, they're an impressive, very impressive team. Very, like you said, very physical, um, very energetic. Very, yes, very, <laughs> very into it. Um, so you That's know, that's a political way of saying yes, it. Yes, yes. Uh, right. But you know, so it was one of those like, uh, it'll be, it'll be interesting to see. You know that 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 game Saturday. Like I wanted to be at the the Loyola Nutrier game last Friday. Timing just doesn't work out when you work a full, you know, you work a real job and, you know, you don't right. really get as much time for your passion project as, as you would like. That um, was a spirited game. Yeah. Yeah. I'm Nutria, sure. So, uh, Nutria came out and punched him right in the mouth. Like, I knew it was going to happen. You could see it. It was, and I don't know who they'll end up playing in the championship, but I got a feeling they're going to have a little bit of a chip on their shoulder because, regardless of, not playing Loyola Academy for the state championship. Yeah. They wanted Loyola Academy for the state championship. They both teams felt it was so unfair what was happening. They both I mean, even afterwards, both yeah. coaches were talking about it. This game should have been played for the state championship or yeah. or been allowed to make it to the state championship, not to be a sectional final. Right. So I, I said it back then, I was talking to parents and I said, let's just say Loyola won. And went to the state championship and won. I said, do you think they would put 25 on the team they're playing? And I said, no, Loyola wouldn't do that. Yeah. Do I think if New Trier gets in the state championship and has the opportunity to put 25 goals on a team? I said, yes, New Trier will put 20. If they could put 25 on somebody to say, maybe this team shouldn't have been in the championship. You've seen New Trier. They will punch you in the mouth and they yeah. will keep scoring. Uh, that's just their style. That, that- they're just a tough and it's so funny to say this for people who don't know New Trier. Yeah, it's in like the the wealthiest area of, of Illinois. You know, yeah. people also oh, it's cake eater. You watch them play hockey. You watch them play lacrosse. <laughs> These are the toughest. They're, they're it's like football players. It's just tough. They're they got a, they got an edge. I love seeing the edge. Yeah, uh, I got a feeling that will be. I think you'll have a lot of pictures to take from there. That oh yeah, be, either that or it, I'll be like, well, this game's over. Um, I right. guess I can stop taking pictures now. <laughs> well, they're playing right now. So what's the weather there? Oh no, no. What is today? Thursday? Yeah, they're yeah. playing uh, uh, Nequa Valley, I think, right now in Hinsdale. 
Yeah. Uh, I don't know if the weather's going on. I'm sure I'll get some updates. I'd probably get a bunch of my phone was just things. So, yeah. yes, we'll go there. We could say Illinois, New Trier. Um, yeah. I'm you want to talk? You well, want to talk Indiana? <laughs> I, I, well, uh, I was going to move over to Ohio for the D1 game because, like, I, I'm – I kind of wish I was at the uh, St. X Dublin Kaufman game Um, because I know we talked earlier this year. I don't think we did it on a podcast, but it was one of those like I really like Kaufman's wins over um, Weddington and I forget the other team that they beat out of North Carolina, but I really like those. And I know during the season there was some questions about their choice of schedule um, as far as like not playing some of the other teams in Ohio. But, you know, I I would I don't know if those doubters have been put to rest yet. Um, but you know, I don't know if Kaufman, but I really like, I was reading a couple of the stories. Cause obviously the other nice thing about the playoffs is usually the newspapers start to report on teams at this time in the year because there's fewer games. So, you know, I've seen the last couple, uh, reports on St. Xavier and it's all underclassmen, freshman, junior, sophomore, junior, like they're all the guys that are, they lost press. nine start. They lost nine starters yeah. from their state championship team last year. And I look Nine at that of and the I'm ten like, starters. Either these guys were really ready, or they are going to be the favorite heading into next year. Um, you know, obviously, oh, I, yeah. you know, not looking at you know, not looking at any of the other teams at this point because that's way too early to start that. But I'm really not well, sure to pick. Like, there's part and like, huh, I don't know. I well, I've seen Saint X play four times. Yeah, and each time they got better. You could see when I when they played Nutrier and they lost to Nutrier, yeah. both teams looked bad. Uh, I remember a coach standing there and he's like, "Wow, Nutrier's really playing good." And I just looked at it and go, "No, they're not." Yeah. <laughs> and, it, and it was before they had three of their hockey players back, yeah. who are now just beasts on that team. And you could tell Saint X had no identity. Yeah. And then they kept getting a little better, and then they kept getting a little better, and then they set back. They had a setback. They lost to Trinity. Yeah. In, in the Louisville. Uh, then they beat Moeller handily yeah. in the in the in the and that's a big game. That's yeah, that, that's, that's a, a rivalry big, game. That's a big rivalry. And I thought it would be closer because Moeller's loaded with talent. They just had some little you know, all it takes is a little thing. So yeah. Saint X then they just beat Saint Ignatius twice. Yeah. In the last three weeks. Uh which Saint Ignatius was the number one team in Ohio pretty much all year long. Yeah. Until Kaufman started just pummeling teams. Yeah. Uh, now I've seen Kaufman a few times. Kaufman is an offensive juggernaut. They've got, you know, everyone talks about their two players, uh, Harris and James. Well, they're more than that. Yeah. I mean, they're. I mean, yeah, you, you don't like, you don't get this far with, right. with just two, <laughs> even in the I Midwest. Mean, like at this got, point in time. Right. They got the the Tyak brothers. Uh, they've got uh, this, this other kid, Rada, who's an ankle breaker. I mean, he was the one who stood out for me the most the first time I saw him. I'm like, oh, I mean, yeah, Evan James looks great and, and, and Harris looks great. I mean, they're so fast and so quick. Uh, but that I don't know how really good Kaufman's D is. Yeah. You know, they, they just take it to you offensively. Um, so it'll be it, it, my my heart says, my brain says Kaufman, and my heart says Saint X, and I think I'd <laughs> rather go with my brain. Uh, but I wouldn't go against Coach Sprung, like you know yeah. this guy. He just again nine starters from the state championship team last year yeah. are gone, and he's in the state championship game again this year. Yeah. Now I talked to eight to ten people in Ohio preseason, and every one of them said. Saint X won't be a factor this year. Yeah. Saint X won't be a factor this year. They're too busy rebuilding. They won't be a factor this year. And every time I brought that up to Coach Strong, he just was like, "You'd see, there would just be a smirk." Like he, yeah. he, he knew. took the he took the chip on his shoulder. I remember him reaching out after a Saint Ignatius when they beat Saint Ignatius the first time, and they didn't get ranked in the top ten in the inside lacrosse, which yeah. I vote on. And he sent me a message, and he votes on it. Yeah. He sent me a message. He goes. What does it take for us to get ranked? And I said, I ranked you. And he said, and I think that, I think he used that chip. Yeah. They're playing. So I guarantee you, he's got those boys right now thinking, we have no shot. He's Lou Holtz in them. Yeah. We've got no shot. No one thinks we could win. So we play to win. So it's, it, 
It's going to be a great game. It's going to be a great game. It's, I think the Merriman, I think the Chagrin Falls Merriman game. Yeah. Uh, the D2 game, you know, most people won't, might not know. I think that's going to be an outstanding game. Yeah. All I keep hearing about Merriman is they have the best coach in the state of Ohio. I haven't heard one person, every person who reaches out to me, talks to me from rivals, from other teams, coaches from other teams. They all talk about the coach from Merrimont, how great he is and how yeah. much he started this. So I, that's, I mean, again, I get excited about this stuff. Yeah. I'm looking forward to it. I can't wait. That's that's going to be a great one. It's, it's going to be a great day. My, it's funny because I think I'm the opposite. My head tells me St. Xavier and my gut tells me Kaufman. I, it's like, I, you know, I'm going to go with St. Xavier They because they think they've over, I don't want to say overplayed, but I think they've over exceeded everybody's expectations, as you kind of pointed out. I, absolutely. And it's it. kind of hard to vote against the team at this point, you know. But, you know, I always say the same thing. Like, you know, for me, like, I don't have a dog in the fight. I really don't care who wins. I just want a good game. Even though I'm not going to be there to see it, like, I will be following be, it. You could get it on TV. Oh, that's the great thing about Ohio. They they stream all their they're streaming them all. Indiana's streaming theirs. Uh, I'm sure Michigan will be streaming theirs. So I could watch because I won't be I won't be in Indiana for the Indiana championship. Yeah. Or Illinois. I'll be in Ohio. Uh, so I'll be watching Indiana. While I'm at Ohio, depending yeah. on what time, because there are four games they are all played at Ohio. So yeah. I'll be able to watch. Water, I'll be able to watch and do this two at a time. So, so how do you uh, see Indiana playing out? Well, tomorrow. Okay, it's hard <laughs> again. You my, do have a you do have a, a bit of a dog in that fight. <laughs> my son plays for Carmel. He's 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 with the varsity now. He won't be dressing for the game. Yeah. Um. Would I like to say Carmel was going to win it all? I would <laughs> like to say Carmel's going to win it all. Do I think Carmel's going to win it all? I. I don't. Yeah. I don't. I I don't want to say that because there is so much talent. Um, you know, everyone here would say Cathedral's the favorite. Yeah. Um, the, the and then everyone thinks it's going to be Cathedral, Carmel. Well, HSC, who won the state championship last year, yeah, who people thought this year wouldn't be. Anywhere close. Well, I've watched HSC play probably six times. Yeah. They might not have the talent. They got. They have talent. They might not have the depth of talent, but they have great coaching, and that's another team that plays with a chip on their shoulder. Yeah. And if I had to sit there and say, you can pick one team, one team, one team, I'd put my money on HSC. Yeah. And that's literally like Carmel's. I mean, Carpel's biggest rival is Cathedral, but I think the, I think the, there's more vitriol between HSC and Carmel because they're two public schools right next to each other, where it's more of a civil type of war. Actually, one of the articles I was going to write, I was going to say the civil war, which yeah. is Cathedral Carmel, and the uncivil war because <laughs> that's where parents are unhinged and swearing at each other and losing their minds, and that's tomorrow night, and that's going to be. And, and that was a and that game was a one goal game when they played in the regular season yeah. with HSC winning. Yeah, and uh, for anybody, to, I guess it's Carmel and Fishers. Well, obviously Carmel's right. Carmel, um, and then HSC's in, in Fishers. And I think it's it's just a few miles. It's literally a straight drive down one road, right? From, from one to the other. You get, well, yeah. it's, I mean, they're, well, several they, ways. But my right, wife and I have gone like the one way. Like right. we usually stay in Carmel, and um, you know the races that we do down there. Sometimes they're in Fishers. Sometimes they're um in carmel and you know we we've gone down that road and we have you know we have things we say about each city it's just kind of funny it's like you know i always think we we joke this is obviously an inside joke I, she doesn't listen to the podcast so she'll never know like we always joke because when it, we obviously we live in chicago in the city we go down to carmel to live ca that carmel life because it's more relaxed and laid back and then we were joking at one point like because the area of fishers were in is by the target and the brewery and all the stuff like that. I'm like, oh, this Fisher's life is just way too hectic. There's just too much going on. Everybody's running around, getting around. That's an inside joke. I have no idea if anything, but it's just the, it's just more. There's more stuff in that area that we do. She gets a kick out of it. So like, uh, we drive down that one road. So it's uh, not far. It's no, ten, ten no. minute drive, and it's always they, it's always those that get the rivalry. Like proximity oh, yeah. does seem to breed well, well, rivals. It, it, it's funny because. I'm not from here. I'm from Chicago. Yeah. Um, 
So I thought it was sort of ridiculous when I first moved here to see grown parents going, losing their minds <laughs> over youth, over youth lacrosse, yeah. screaming at each other. And I'm going, what? And, and it's not normal. It's like, oh, these caramel people and oh, these fishers people. I'm like, you're the same damn people. It's just a different <laughs> yeah, line. It's, it's, it's like five oh, miles what? down the like, road. Like, you know, it's almost like Wilmette and Winnetka yelling at each other. Like, oh, you know, my nephew's from Wilmette goes to school with Netka and they're like, Oh, we have more street kid because we're next to Evanston. Yeah. I'm like, what? I don't get it. I don't get the rivalry like that. I mean, I can get it fun kids rival. Right. But when parents literally honestly hate someone from Carmel, oh you're from Carmel. I'm like, what? I'm no, I'm from Chicago. Yeah. I just moved here because <laughs> it's an easier life for my family. Yeah. But it's so I mean there will literally be it could it I, I, parents got kicked out a year ago. Escorted out. Yeah. Of the game, which is sad. Um, I know some of the parents, <laughs> uh, some of the parents' names have been sent to me of certain school. I know the Carmel parents who aren't, and I know the HSE parents who other HSE parents have sent me messages yeah. on who these people are. And I just, and I won't be in the press box for this. I'm just going to be like a fan and I'll probably stay away from everybody because you know, I don't want to get, I have friends, parents on both sides that I know now Yeah, and I'm friendly with. So I don't want to, I, I don't, you know, I don't want to make it look like I'm cheering for one team or, or being a part for another team. I mean, I'll probably wear a caramel shirt cause that's why I live here. Right. I my my your, taxes are paying for the school. And <laughs> your son is on, even he's not dressing, right. he goes to the school. No. So right. yeah, it's, it's, he'll be standing on the sideline. Yeah. It's hard. So, it's hard not to, uh, right. you know, have that some allegiance in you. Know, right. I mean, gonna... I, I, I hope, I, I hope they win. I hope they win. Uh, uh, I just, <laughs> I, but I just, I just know I what's going to happen. I, I can see the anguish. I just, well, I just know what's going to happen if they lose. I, yeah. Because they expect so much. They expect to win absolutely everything in yeah. this in this town. Yeah. I, which is one of the reasons I moved here. I love striving for excellence. I, yeah. That's what I, that's what I wanted my kids to be a part of. You're always striving to excellence. I just know that the heads will explode if they don't win. Yeah. If they lose to HSC tomorrow, I, it'll just be like heads will explode and people will be going crazy. And, and, and I don't want to see that. Right. What, I don't want to see it. I don't want to see HSC lose either. Cause I don't, <laughs> I, so it's, I'm stuck. But if I had to choose, I'd I'd love to see Carmel. I think HSC wins it all. I think they win it all. All right. Yeah, I do. I do. Well, by the time anybody is listening to this, you will either be a say we were right or wrong. Right. Almost immediately. <laughs> right. And the unfortunate thing is, anyone from Indiana who probably listened to this, I will not hear the end of it. No matter what, I can't win. There's an. I just. I've just put myself in a no-win situation because I said I think Carmel will lose, but I want him to win. That would mean HSC lose, but I think they're going to win. And then Cathedral, I haven't even talked about. Yeah. And those people will also be upset with me. Um, and funny enough, <laughs> earlier in the year, someone called me and accused me of being a homer for Cathedral, <laughs> where, I, where I had to explain to him, do you understand that I live in Carmel? Yeah. That's like our rival. Yeah. Like I had to explain it. And I go, so are you calling me a homer for Cathedral is also. Well, it's all, it's always good because like, uh, if people can't really tell, if they think you're a homer and they're off, or either they're not listening or, you know, you're doing well enough to show that you're not biased by anybody <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> that, well. they can, that they, they can't actually tell. So, uh, yeah, it'll be interesting. And then obviously next week we'll, uh, probably do our prediction for the, for the Michigan championship game. Even though it's going to, it's like, I will call you crazy if you don't pick brother rice at this point, just because of what they've done at this point. But, uh, can be hard well, to still, pick against them. Yeah, but then again, hey, Catholic Central is still great. It's yeah. just, I don't know. The, Brother Rice looks like they're on a mission. And then Forest Hill Central, I, I wish more people could see that team yeah. and the D2. I wish more people could see that team. That team is loaded with talent and they sort of over get looked. I, I'm their cheerleader. If I could cheerlead for Forest Hill Central, I'd love them to play. I'd love them to play anyone. Yeah. They beat. They beat Catholic Central and they gave Brother Rice a pretty damn good fight. I, I, I would I've said before, I said 
Forest Hills Central could probably walk into almost every Midwest state and steamroll everybody. Yeah. And they get no pub. They get no pub at all. Mm-hmm. So uh, that's where I'd like to see those. Give me the best of the best. Give yeah. me Forest Hills Central, D- Detroit, uh, or Catholic Central, Brother Rice. You could throw in a Heartland. Let me see all of them play each other. East Grand Rapids, who's won the last, what, two, three state yeah. championships for D2. Let them all play and see who comes out the best. That's yeah. what I want. I like everyone to play. Yeah. But it's not going to happen. Yep. All right. Well, Michael, we're going we're gonna to wrap it up. Um, so we'll do that by tell everybody where they can find you online and follow you for this weekend with the, well, I guess by this time it's too late <laughs> to follow. Where can they right. see your tweets uh, o- right. online if they want to follow the right. games in your uh, comments? On Twitter, I will be at MFWCHI. And you can email me at mward at laxrecords.com um, and f- follow the podcast, uh, the, the YouTube channel. You can give them all that info, Mike. Yep. Um, and you can find me at Lax Records on Twitter, Instagram. Um, the YouTube channel is uh, youtube.com slash Lax Records. And obviously you can listen to the podcast and whatever your podcast player of choice is. I have all those links on the website. Um, you can just search for Around the Crease in um, your podcast player search for lax records we're the only one there so (laughs) pretty easy so everybody um until next week see ya all right everybody thank you again for listening to another episode of the around the crease podcast i cannot thank you enough if you watched it this far on youtube please don't forget to hit that subscribe button and if you enjoyed this video please hit that thumbs up and give it a like it really helps out and as you can see you can watch another episode of around the crease by clicking on the link above